Hello, welcome to Unified Desired State Configuration, DSC V3. Today we are going to cover the DSC V2 functionality, the high level overview and its limitations. And then we move on to the new Unified Desired State Configuration, DSC V3. We see what's new in DSC V3 and what's coming next. And we end the session with an example. DSC V2. So DSC is a management platform in PowerShell that enables you to manage your infrastructure to be in the desired state. DSC is a declarative platform used for configuration, deployment and management of systems. DSC contains three primary components, configurations, resources and LCM. Configurations are declarative PowerShell scripts which define and configure instances of resources. A resource is a make it so part of the DSC. Resources will have the business logic to identify whether the machine is in the desired state or not. A configuration will define how the resource look like, like what kind of properties the resource has. An LCM local configuration manager is responsible for bringing down the configuration from a centralized server, DSC server, and executing the DSC resources periodically. And LCM will also responsible to periodically check with the DSC server if there are any updates to the configuration. If so, then LCM will bring down the latest configuration and execute the DSC resources periodically. There are two different ways of authoring the DSC resources, script based resources and class based resources. Script based resources are widely used. Script based resources are divided into two different pieces. So the first one is the configuration morph, which tells how your resource look like. And the second one is the resource implementation, which goes in a PowerShell file, which is a PowerShell module. And in case of class based resources, both the resource definition and implementation are in one file. So what's the problem with DSC V2? Here are some of the limitations. With DSC V2, you always require an LCM to execute the DSC resources. And there is no PowerShell DSC support on Linux or Mac. Script based resources, although these are widely used and very popular, these have their own drawbacks or limitations. Script based resources have a morph configuration which tells what the resource look like. Morphs transfer management object format, and this is a Microsoft technology and it is not being widely used. So for new customers, they need to learn what morph is, how to generate a morph file, and how to deal with the errors in the morph generation. Generating the morph file is very tricky in some scenarios when your resource is very complex. 
DSC resource definition and implementation are in two different places. So the DSC resource definition goes into the MOF file and the implementation goes in a PowerShell module. And if there are any discrepancy between these two, given they are in two different places, then it is very hard to debug the errors. The current implementation of DSC v2 is heavily dependent on MMI, Microsoft Management Infrastructure. And this is only supported on Windows. Desired state configuration v3, which we also call as unified desired state configuration. DSC v3 is a class platform. It is supported on all the operating system where the PowerShell is supported. Windows, Linux and Mac. We rewrite the complete DSC implementation from scratch. We get rid of the MMI dependency. So wherever you see SIM instances. You no need to. Worry about learning what the SIM instance is, how. What are the different properties and how to use it? Now it is. Only PS objects. So for new customers who want to use the DSC, they don't need to learn anything related to the SIM, anything related to the MMI. We decouple the DSC related code from PowerShell. And we moved the DSC related code to a private repository at the moment which is PS desired state configuration. The main intent of doing this is as the PowerShell is gaining. More popularity. More and more features are added to it. And the size of PowerShell is going higher. And it affects the performance. And DSC is not required for all the PowerShell customers. So we intend to move the pieces which are. Not always required. Out of the PowerShell and plug it into the PowerShell. At runtime as a subsystem. DSC V3 supports only class based resources. It doesn't support the script based resources. With class based resources, both the configuration, the resource definition and the implementation. Resides in one PowerShell module file. I know you might be thinking hearing class based. As an admin, I don't want to learn. Coding and class based looks like. I need to learn something new. In fact, it is not. We will go in detail about how to write a class based resource. In the upcoming slides. So it is not as scary as it sounds like. In fact, it is uh, very easy to. Write a class based resource and to convert the existing script based to class based resource. We also introduced a new commandlet to execute the DSC resources, so there is no need to. Have an LCM on the machine. The new commandlet is invoke DSC resource, and this commandlet is supported on all the operating systems, Windows, Linux and Mac, so you can have the. DSC functionality on all the operating systems. And we also support continue to support the configuration compilation. But now we bring back the configuration compilation on non Windows operating systems as well, such as Linux and Mac. And the intent for this is. There are scenarios where customers want to have the development environment. The DSC resource creation in one machine, but they want to test on several other machines, depending on the operating system and the need. 
So if the customer is using a Linux or a Mac environment to define the DSC resources, then they may need the configuration compilation. So for this, we still continue to support the configuration compilation on all the operating systems. Earlier it is supported only on Windows, but now we support on all the operating systems. So one question that might pop up uh, here is, given there is no need of an LCM, how can I achieve this functionality? The LCM functionality in my environment, let's say on Linux or Mac. There are different ways of doing implementing an LCM. One basic example is you can have a cron job that will talk to the centralized DSC server and downloads the configuration and periodically executes the DSC resource. This is a very basic. And a complex thing can be something like guest configuration, which is a Azure service. So guest configuration is an Azure service. And if you have a non Azure machine, then you can onboard that non Azure machine as an Arc server to Azure, and you still have your machine in your on premises. So you don't need to expose anything. You don't need to have a public IP or anything. You still have your machine in your constraint environment. But you will onboard your machine to the Arc as an Arc server and gain the DSC functionality using the guest configuration. So guest configuration in a nutshell has an agent running on all the target machines. Let's say you have thousands of machines that you as an admin are managing. It can be both Azure or non Azure machines. And you want to make sure the machine is in desired state configuration or not. You can do so by using the guest configuration. So the guest configuration agent on all the thousand machines will talk to the guest configuration service, which is an Azure service to fetch the latest DSC resources, and then you execute it on the machine. Finally, the agent will send back the report back to the service, guest configuration service. And guest configuration service will show it in a one single pane on the Azure portal for all the thousand machines. And you can filter based on the resources which are not compliant based on the geography, based on the resource group. So there are multiple ways of implementing the LCM. So the future roadmap for the DSC V3 is DSC modules are not shipped with the future releases from PowerShell 7.2 onwards. DSC modules are published to PowerShell Gallery, both DSC V2 and DSC V3. And currently we support both DSC V2 and V3. So customers can continue to use their existing script based resources using DSC V2 module. So right now the DSC V3 module is in beta. So you can expect a, a more fine grade constraint environment going forward with a more stable code and more releases. So we would like you to try DSC V3 and give us feedback. And we also have the desire to make the DSC repository public in the coming months. And we plan to introduce a commandlet that helps you to migrate the existing script based resources to class based resources. So now let's go over an example to understand how to write a class-based resource because class-based looks like 
I need to write, learn how to write code, but in fact it's not. So I have a simple, very basic PowerShell module, which you can download it from the PowerShell gallery. And the name of the module is create file. So the intent of the create file is to make sure there is a file present on the target machine. If not, then I will create one. So for that I have. The core logic goes in my PowerShell functions, which is similar to what the script based resources have. So there is nothing difference here, no additions at all. So you have your get, set and test where you have all the logic. So the get will get the current state of the machine and the set will set the state to be the desired state and test will test whether the machine is in the desired state or not. So for this example, since I want the file to exist in a particular folder, the get will say whether the file whether the file is there or not, what is the current state? And the test based on the current state, it will say whether the machine is in desired state or not. Set, it will force us the machine to be in that desired state. So, so far there is no difference for this resource from a script based resource. So here is the class which is representing your DSC resource. So the class is more like a wrapper which has all the properties and three methods get, set and test. And these three methods simply call into the functions that we saw earlier, which are these. So if you have a script based resource, then it is just the matter of adding this wrapper class. You just need to define a class, add the properties, and then have these three methods get, set, and test, and call into your existing get target resource, set target resource, and test target resource. Right? And in order to execute the DSC resource, all you need to do is first set the PS module path to the directory that contains the DSC resource. And you can test that using get DSC resource. And then you can issue get DSC resource hyphen syntax, which will give you the properties of this particular class. So in this case, path, ensure, and reasons. And then to execute, there is no need of LCM. We introduced a new commandlet invoke DSC resource. So invoke DSC resource takes in the resource name, the module name, and the properties you have to pass in to your DSC resource and the method you want to execute. So in my case, I want to make sure this particular file is present. So I want to first see whether my machine is in the desired state or not. So I execute the test method and it says my machine is not in the desired state. Then I execute the get method to get the current state of the machine. And I populate the reasons. And if I look at the reasons, it says the file does not exist and the expectation is. To have the file. So now I run the set method. So set method forces the machine to be in the desired state. After the set, if I run the test, it will show that my machine is in the desired state. That means set has forced the machine to be in the desired state. So that's all I have. If you have any questions, comments, then please feel free to provide your feedback. We will always open to the feedback. And to make a better product. Thank you so much for your time. Hope you have rest of 
great rest of your day. Thank you.